you all for coming out tonight. Um, who here in the crowd has tried stand-up paddleboarding? Two of us. Um, great. Who here has kayaked before? So, pretty much everybody. So I brought in, um, my girlfriend Lindsay just came, she just delivered the paddleboard as our prop and demo for the evening. But, so to start out, so paddleboards can typically be anywhere from 10 feet to 11 feet. So, pretty big vessel, but once you get out on the water, it may not feel that big because you may have some conditions that could be trouble. But we always start at Capital Sub talking about safety. Um, at Capital Sub, we always use leashes. So leashes are super important, especially if you're out paddling on the Southern River because waves or winds or boat traffic will come up and kind of knock you into the water. So this leash is really important, first line of defense for safety, as well as life jackets. So type 3 PFD require all of our participants at Capital Sub to wear a life jacket. And for those experienced paddlers or racers, so we all race competitively paddlers, we require a inflatable life jacket. So these are worn in a lot of our photographs, such as this one here. Um, I'm on the paddleboard with our dog, Puck, Paddle Pup. If you're on Instagram, check them out. Puck. Uh, does he have a life jacket on one of those things? He does. So that red life jacket around the dog is his PFD. Not self employed though. It's Not self employed That's a cool vest. Which makes it a lot easier with the handle to pull him up and onto the board. Huckleberry is 75 pounds, so when he decides to jump into the water, they can be quite troubling to pull them up. But for us, for the stand-up paddle boards, we use these inflatable life jackets, so I'll demonstrate. But basically, you use the inflate, just like so, and this would go around your neck. So, these are our life jackets, one example of an inflatable. However, there are other type three PFDs which actually go around the neck. Um, always worn in the front, that way in case you inflate this, it's behind you, you're not going to go face down. So recently in the Capitol in July, I don't know if you guys saw it, but myself and the dog were in the paper and explaining the traditional life vest for these employees. Um, Cover story. Stand up paddleboarding comes from the surf culture, where when you're surfing, you may not need a full life jacket. Um, there's an inherent risk in any water sport, especially stand up paddling. So, um, capital sub, our first rule is life jackets and leashes. Now, if an individual out on their own goes and purchases a board, they may not be educated. So we're trying to work with the city to mandate or put in place some sort of signage at all public launches for when you go out onto the waterways, that there's knowledge or a way to know what equipment should be required. Um, is there a reason you picked the one around the waist rather than um, a full vest can restrict movement, especially when we're paddling. In a race where we're competing anywhere from 3 to 13 to 31 miles, where we're coming up here in October, we're doing a 31 mile paddleboard race. To wear that full vest can be very uncomfortable. You can rub on your skin. I mean, the full vest, the harness, normally as an inflatable sailboat, it's usually the harness one that we normally use. Yeah. Right. So there are the harness that. Um, our auto inflates, and there's also the manual inflate. Um, but this too would get in the way of that. It could. Yeah. So like this motion with restriction there is going to show that. that. <laughs> so with your paddle, right, when you're out there really paddling hard and switching sides, that, that full harness vest is, is inhibiting. Um, it can be quite uncomfortable after you've been out there for more than an hour. Uh, did that answer your question? So the waste ones are easily purchasable? Yeah. Um, we carry them at the shop, or you can pick them up at any local surf shop, or um, West Marine has them as well. Got them, so. yeah. Yeah, you can get it, have a CO2 and refill it later. I mean, you can, that's, once you inflate it, you can deflate it, get a new cartridge and repack it. Correct, yeah. So there's a safety mechanism on here that is marked green, and then once you inflate it, it becomes red. So basically, you know that you need to replenish that CO2 cartridge. Yeah. Yeah. So we're 
still green because the cartridge hasn't been removed. But that's the problem. switch to up here on the mic. All right. So again, my name is Kevin Agus. Um, born and raised here in Annapolis. Well, born in Baltimore, raised in Annapolis. Went to Broadneck High School. Um, what really started my passion and working with the Severn River was um, I had a lot of friends growing up that lived on pines in the Severn. I remember growing up 8 through 12 years old being able to swim down at pines on the Severn Beach. And now from my knowledge, I guess that's no longer allowed. If it's you can't yeah, swim. Do you like, does pines. anybody live on pines in the summer? Um, we were boating by it on Sunday, and there was a swim around there. We thought it was a buoy. There were swimmers. Um, as of three years ago, I know there were signs posted at the beach, no swimming. Um, and, and why is that? So back in 2016, Capital Sub started our kids' camps, and I wanted to know if the water was clean with regards to bacteria. Um, so we used to be located, Capital Sup, on Spot Creek. We were at the old South Annapolis Yacht Center, the old Sarles and Petrini's Marina, so that were there on Spot. And we had our business established, and I became very active with the Spot Creek concerns. Um, but growing up, I grew up in Arnold, right near the Safeway, right off Church Road there. So my summers were spent either down in Ocean City, Maryland, or here on the Southern River. So I could say the Southern River was my playground. Um, what is Capital Sub? Capital Sub stands for Stand Up Paddle Boarding, Capital being the capital of Maryland. And our mission is to make the world a more active place through the culture and sports of paddle. So not just specific to stand up, but also kayaking as well. Um, but Capital Sub is definitely a clean water company. So our mission and our focus is to educate others and to also try to bring that connection to have clean water so we can all go out and recreate. In 2017, we experimented with opening a location in Washington, D.C. on Anacostia, which we had to force close that location because the water was so polluted. People did not want to recreate on that river. There was so much trash and debris and raw sewage that overflowed into that waterway. And maybe market research we didn't do enough of, and <laughs> we came and found out the hard way. Or we're, we persevered and we're still here and Capital Sub is still thriving. Um, Once you walk over the trash, you don't need a board now. Yeah, was, <laughs> and especially 2018 where we had a record-breaking year of rainfall. There's so much debris and trash in the waterways. I mean, even here in the city of Annapolis, or at Horn Point Beach right down in Eastport, there, that area was encapsulated with debris. I have a photograph in here where we took their kids from our kids' camp out and around Horn Point and did a beach cleanup that day. Um, but what does Capital Sub mean to me? Um, Capital Sub is community. Um, we lost a fallen brother, one of our closest friends and paddlers, and it brought out a community of about 75 people to do an honorary memorial service for him last summer. So this is a photo of us at the old location at the South Annapolis Shot Center, doing a traditional surf um, memory for our friend Cody that passed. Um, here's just another photograph of that group kind of see that view of Spot Creek. Um, Cabo Sub is family, so I mentioned racing. So we have a race team of about 30 to 50 participants that travel and we compete in these races. We did a race underneath the Bay Bridge span, nine miles over and back. So this can also be an entry level for people interested in doing a one mile. An hour of paddle boarding can burn upwards of 300 to 400 calories. So it's kind of hard to find another sport that might actively engage the body as much as that. Um, Brian mentioned my background was personal training. When I found stand-up paddleboarding, it was a really great entryway from teaching others physical fitness, but also enjoying the waterways like I did growing up. Um, Capital Sub's education. So here's a photograph of us doing a field trip at Sherwood this summer. We did a camp. We brought 25 boards to Sherwood, and we did a full day of activities for the kids at their camp, and also did some paddleboarding games and education. Um, Brian Gomes helped me out last summer with some activities and field trips, um, moisture education. But um, Capital Sub is also environmental stewardship. So some things, this is a photograph of the debris and the trash pickup we did that day at Horn Point. Um, that beach was covered in wood and trash and it was really neat to have that interaction with the kids 
teach them to clean up and be stewards of their environment. Um, I know there was a question a lot, like, who is our audience? Um, I pulled this from our Yelp page, kind of our, our targeted marketing, but a lot of our audience um, typically is between the 20 to 40 age range. However, if you all would like to try to come stand up paddleboarding, I highly encourage it. It is a lot easier than it looks. Um, I think Ann and Bob went and paddleboarded in New Zealand? Australia. Australia. How was it, Ann? It was difficult. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> um, but um, this growing millennial market is in this Washington, D.C. and Baltimore region. So kind of our targeted audience is that region, as well as the growing Eastern Shore community as well. Um, so back in 2015, I wanted to get more involved, and I always knew and knew that oysters helped to clean the water, but never really understood their importance. So I reached out, and I think it was with Southern River and Bob would come with the Marylanders Grow Oysters program, and Bob helped me to establish um, 50 oyster cages which I had no idea was going to be as much work as it was. And with the help of my girlfriend, Lindsay, and some others, we were able to maintain and clean those oyster cages. And it, it led to a, a broader reach of how can we get the community involved and want to come out and volunteer. So it led to monthly volunteer cleanings. So if you all live on the water, I highly recommend checking out the MGO program. I think there's 400 participants that grow oysters off their docks just on the Seven River alone? Or is that through the whole Maryland? That's just, that's just on the Seven. Yeah. Just on the Seven. Seven. It's the largest river group for MGO in the state. So it's pretty interesting stuff. I mean, we've seen water quality increase this summer. We've got more bay grasses than we've ever seen. Is that impacted from the oysters? I like to think so. Um, so that led to our having or to claim Spot Creek's largest oyster garden. Um, little marketing pitch but we were able to get volunteers out every week or every month to come out and help clean these even in the colder months of january and february we were out there scrubbing these cages because 50 cages is a lot of work if you've ever cleaned or dunked an oyster cage it can be pretty heavy and fouled and if you don't maintain them they can get pretty bad um, here's a picture of the oysters um, this is a clump of a natural spat setting and this is a two-year-old oyster pretty amazing to see these oysters that were the size of a grain of rice grow into, I mean, a half dollar size oyster. That was impressive to me. Um, we hosted some oyster cage building activities with the Oyster Recovery Partnership, another just hands-on activity for people. So if you guys want to get involved with the program but don't have a dock, you can get your communities to reach out to ORP or MGO and Sun River and maybe host some oyster cage building activities. That's something that everybody can come out and do. Um, back to our kids camp. So in 2016, we started our kids camps and we really wanted to know if the water was clean. So we call it Grom Camp. So Gromit in surf term is a Grom, which is a kid surfer under 16. So we have our Grom camps. We run six weeks of camps in the summer. They're three hours a day and we teach them introductory stand-up paddleboarding, but also how to be stewards of the environment and just have some fun out on the water. Um, we do power races, and then here's another photograph of us on the Horn Point Beach that day, picking up some debris that was actually posted in the All Annapolis Facebook page. Um, so into Spot Creek Conservancy. So with that partnership, we wanted to know if the water was clean. So we started its testing of six locations in 2016, which eventually grew to 11 sites on the Spot Creek. So all throughout the headwaters from the left-hand side and all the way out to the Eastport Yacht Club, we have data points that we've been testing for three years to know if the best management practices the watershed has been putting into place, if those are reducing the nutrients that are being um, audited from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the Chesapeake Bay Agreement for us to decrease the nutrient load. Uh, we test for nitrogen and phosphorus, but also the bacteria count. So if the bacteria count is over 104, then that means that that water is not safe for human recreation, that we could get skin infections, we could ingest the water, and we could get sick. And it's really important to know that number for our kids that are going out on the water. Um, which then led us to hold a fundraiser. 
because we didn't have any funds to run the water monitoring. So we helped organize with the Spot Creek Conservancy the Paddle Fest. So I know some of you joined in that Paddle Fest that year. I've got a little video. Is there sound on this? So we'll watch a little video. So with the Powell Fest, I believe the number raised was $10,000, which helped us to go into our next season of water monitoring and expand that programming and help to raise awareness around the Spot Creek watershed. Um, it was interesting joining a for-profit and non-profit entity to kind of come together for education and to bring these communities together because we introduced people from Capital Sup's neighbor into the Spot Creek Conservancy group, and it was a great partnership between the two. Um, also, we highlight our yappy hours. So we do a lot of stuff with your pup. So you saw the first picture of me and the dog Huckleberry, but dogs can be susceptible to these bacteria that are in the water. So with the yappy hour, everybody who here has a dog? We have a few dog owners. Everybody loves their dogs, and everybody loves their neighbors' dogs. <laughs> Hopefully, so we want to keep our dogs safe. Um, Here's some pups in the shop, some cool dog pics. And here is Lindsay with Huckleberry and my business partner, Chris, wife, Sarah, and their new puppy, Maverick. So at the close of 2018, we had to move off of our location at the South Annapolis Yacht Center and we founded a partnership with the Annapolis Maritime Museum. So as you guys know, the Maritime Museum is focused on education and it was a great way for us to bring our water access onto their property and develop that partnership. It's been going really well so far, and we're very happy with the, where we are at the Ellenware Nature Park, which is down at Windup Road, past the Giant, past Bird Javens, right there to the right. Um, this is our new shop. It's a little smaller than the old location, but we're very happy, and we have direct water access right there. Still a public park, so you can come in and drop your boards or equipment in. However, we're there to assist and also offer an amenity to the park. Most Annapolis City Parks, Jonas Green, Quiet Waters, um, Truxton Park all have an amenity, so we're kind of offering that water recreation amenity to those parks as well, this park as well. Um, right off Edgewood, directly to the right of Bert Javins. Yeah. Um, Great view there. If you haven't been by, come down, enjoy the park. The Maritime Museum has signed a contract with the city to invest money to restoring the park, and they've done a magnificent job. It's great. They, they redid all the oyster shell paths. They rebuilt the docks there. The park is clean and safe. It's really nice. A ton of wildlife. There's otters that live in the water there. I haven't gotten any pictures of that yet, but it's pretty neat. Um, and also, a lot of wildlife, deer, birds. We offer paddle memberships for those that don't want to purchase their own board. So you can come down, purchase paddle membership, 
but to get people from the DC or Baltimore, Eastern Shore area that don't want to purchase or lug around their own piece of equipment, they can come down and just pick up a paddle membership and hop on the water at any time. Um, paddle boarding kayak rentals, so we do cater a lot to bachelorette parties, bachelor parties, we have large groups that come out and enjoy the water, corporate outings from large corporations. Um, and then we have our SUP yoga. So Lindsay is one of our yoga instructors. She teaches yoga for us at Capital SUP. Um, paddleboard yoga is a little bit challenging, but definitely recommend giving it a try. Uh, sunrise paddles, also led by Lindsay. Beautiful. Back Creek offers a great vantage point to get out into the bay and see the sunrise rise right above the Bay Bridge. It's really great. Um, LED night tours, so we don't do a lot of these. However, when we go out on the water, we put lights up underneath the bottom of the boards with a 360 white stern light that's behind us so other boats can see us. Um, and we'll do birthday parties or special events where we go out. We used to go downtown Annapolis when we were at our old location. However, we've just been experimenting with a few of these at the new site. Um, this is our team. Couldn't have done it without this awesome team this year. We had 17 employees which for a small business was pretty impressive to have that many and still be successful. And I mean, I couldn't, could not have done it without, without that team. Um, this leads into the next little bit of what Capital Sub is to be doing in the off season and also to help grow partnerships through the community. So we established a nonprofit called the Live Water Foundation last year. We got our 501c3 and the Live Water Foundation was founded originally to work with veteran organizations such as Team RWB, Wounded Warrior Project, and also the Walter Reed Medical Hospital. So we get these guys and girls out into the water and it's almost like a sense of rehab for them. They come out, they enjoy paddling, it's a serene, tranquil environment, and they can enjoy the water just like we do, and some of them it's therapeutic. Um, we worked with the Housing Authority this summer, and we went to the pool off the President Street in the Eastport Terrace Harbor House community, and we worked with eight individuals and took paddle boards to their pool for two sessions, and then we went out to Truxton Park for a session, and then to Ellen Moyer Park for a session. So these individuals who may have never ever had an experience out on the water, we brought this paddling sport to them through the Live Water Foundation. Um, we also work with veteran and active military through paddling rehabilitation programs. So this was our fallen brother Cody that we lost. Um, he was the inspiration for this foundation to get this up and going. Um, he was a daily inspiration to me. Some days you don't feel like going and working out or really going for that bike ride or going for that walk, but for him to get up every day and love to come down and paddleboard with Capital Sup and the Live Water Foundation was really inspirational for me and a lot of others, so we kind of were living in that with them. Um, in the winter time, we go to the Walter Reed Pool and we do clinics for them. Um, we're going to be expanding that to a weekly program at their pool where we bring the paddleboards to their location in a safe environment and then introduce them to open water in the summer. Um, this is another part. Um, I know that the Live Water Foundation is going to be sponsoring some of the Back Creek Conservancy water testing this summer that just took place. Um, we haven't established which sites or financially how much this is going to cost, but the Live Water Foundation has committed to funding some of these locations. And this is a map of the general Annapolis area. We have Spot Creek on the top and then Back Creek on the bottom. So this summer we tested six locations on the Back Creek. Um, myself and then my team members at Capital Sub and some from Live Water Foundation, we went out on paddle boards and did bacteria samples from the boards. Um, some of the sites were clean, some up at the headwaters were not. So with this data, now hopefully we can start to dive in and figure out why. We've been working with Tammy Demansky from Anne Arundel Community College, using her standards for testing at the lab that she works out of. And question graph. The green and the red, green's good, red's bad? Yes, so green is good and the red is bad. Um, this was last Thursday's data, so we had a pretty heavy rainstorm on Wednesday. After it rains, a lot of rainwater flushes into the waterways and that can increase bacteria counts. Um, we have done some DNA testing on the bacteria to know that it's not necessarily human waste, but still bacteria is bad and if we ingest it, we can get sick from it but it's not like the DC bacteria counts we used to read in the thousands. So that's a comforting statistic. 
Um, here's a photograph of last Thursday. This is one of our individuals, Wayne, that comes out from Walter Reed. Wayne lost his arm in combat, and he was taught how to take a water sample. It was really interesting to build that connection from the active military segment of our initiatives to the clean water and bring these two communities together. Um, so it kind of wraps up my presentation for tonight. If you guys want to find out more or want to get involved, my contact information is up here. If you guys want to come out, I'll take you all out on a paddleboard lesson I can, if you're interested. But other than that, we can answer some questions. Range for cost to buy a paddleboard. So used paddleboard can range from 500 to 600. However, retail new is about 1,000. Um, definitely you get what you pay for. You can get some cheaper boards for around the 300 range, but they're not going to last very long. Any other questions? Yes, what sir? about a serious accident? Have there, have there been any on any? Um, there have been some. This summer we did see a number of accidents, not with capital sub, but from individuals going out on their own. Um, and, and what does that consist of? Typically individuals not wearing life jackets. And falling off? Falling off. I know there were two kayakers that drowned in the summer. The summer alcohol as well. I think I don't know the toxicology reports on that, but I, I would assume. Um, so life jackets, kayaking, paddleboarding, wear them, leashes on your paddleboards. Safety first. I'll be your testimonial. I was I was involved with the. Uh, Elkin City Crab, I guess, up in Tapsco. And I was in white water in a kayak, and I hardly ever wear a life jacket. I rolled it in white water, but I had the jacket on. And I scuba, I'm not afraid to go under the water. I was stuck underwater in a limb of a tree, and the limb went, came out the armpit of the jacket. Kayak's not supposed to sink. You turn it sideways in white water. It will get enough water, 8.3 pounds per gallon. It will sink. And you see your life go by. It's clear, it's warm, it's clean, but I'm stuck. And I said, Ken, you're going to friggin' die. You got to off. So I got the jacket off and I popped up. My buddy came back to help me. And then the paddle came up and I grabbed it. He said, that's good. You never. I said, what do you mean never let go? I said, that's not supposed to sink either. That was under the white water. But anyway, that was my lesson. Can't wear your jacket when you go back. Yeah. Any other questions? Ma'am? Just, just out of curiosity, I can, <clears throat> how do you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> we, do, we always start everyone on their knees when they're launching from a dock. Sometimes you can stand directly onto a board if you're launching from a beach. However, so you would start kneeling. Um, demonstrate. Don't try this at home. So when, when paddleboarding, we would be here from your knees in a safe position, right? And then to stand, you'd be here, eyes are up, plus feet, and then we're standing tall. It's that easy. It's that easy. You too. Get on board tomorrow. Right. So I have a couple questions. So if I'm not up for the Pepsi challenge of stand-up paddleboard, you guys do have kayaks. You, you have kayaks, one. single and double kayaks. Okay. And then uh, what about? The, I've read and heard that there's inflatable kayak. So those cost effective, easier to start on. It's obviously a cheaper investment. Can you sure. talk about inflatables? Um, there are inflatable paddleboards and inflatable kayaks. I've never been in an inflatable kayak. 
However, the inflatable paddle boards are just as convenient. If not more, you can roll them up, put them in your trunk of your car instead of carrying a hard board. I mean, this board is about 30 pounds, whereas an inflatable can roll up to 20 pounds and you can put it in your car or trunk. Um, if you don't have a truck or an SUV or a vehicle that you can put a board, a hard board on, then the inflatable is an option for you. Yeah. It depends on your size. Yeah, yeah so if you're a if six you foot. Six six <laughs> and two twenty five. It's not for you, Mark. You want a bigger board. Um, very convenient for a boat if you're yeah. Uh, so. If you're more average size. Yeah. But with all the waterways and, and creeks, specifically of the Southern River paddle boarding, um, I have a fourteen foot race board. I'll depart from Back Creek and come up into the Southern and explore the different creeks training for the 31 mile race we have coming up and it's, it's nice to be able to just get out there and you're human powered not having to worry about a motor or an engine just watch your weather wear your safety gear tell a friend have a float plan carry a phone on you you can kind of go anywhere yeah use those uh dry bags for yeah. your phone is perfect you know, really all of our instructors carry their phones in a dry floating case for emergencies um, so the biggest next thing is just weather too. Like don't go out in high winds. If there's a storm coming, monitor your weather. Lightning, thunder, monitor that as well. But it's a pretty easy way to enjoy the water. Um, we read about, I guess, downwinders. Yeah. I think that by the Coast Guard or? So, <laughs> that's an interesting story. Um, downwinding is a sport that is like sailing where you're going downwind. That creates waves that you can surf in an open body of water. So in Hawaii, Hawaiians will go from island to island 16 miles in a downwind condition to create surf in a way that there would never be surf in the river of Severn, right? So there are times in the winter we'll wear full wetsuits and there were some individuals that were picked up from the Coast Guard which actually put them in more danger of being cold and hypothermic on the boat where their, lights, their wetsuits were no longer wet. Um, they were competent paddlers. How do we educate the public to not do that unless you know what you're doing? I don't have the answer for that. But there was an instance where there were some downwind paddlers and they got picked up. In the river or the bay? In the river. In the second river. Yeah. Uh, what had happened was people on shore saw these paddlers following the water, called the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard came out, and I think Maryland DNR picked them up. Not why did they think that? They thought they were in stress. They were, but they were okay. Um, they were just crazy kids doing their winter uh, <coughs> down winding. Is the number of these catching up with the number of canoes and kayaks at all? Yeah, I'd say the sport is growing. Um, it's capped off. We use we had our biggest season in 2016. Our numbers have been increasing since 2016. So to answer that from my perspective, I would say that it's leveled off and it's about equal. Losing Cody last summer, how does that change your perspective when you're on the water or going out on the water? How do you do Definitely that? safety first and educating our guests and other people that are getting into the sport about wearing your leash, wearing your life jacket, having a float plan, having that cell phone on you to make sure I mean, all of our warriors that go out on the water now are always required to wear these um, full type 3 PFD. Um, the waist belts are not acceptable. That's more for competition. Yeah. That's more for competition. Um, you know, after that incident, it's just education. Um, you can put rules and laws in place, but that's not going to stop someone from doing what they're going to do. So if you educate them from the start, Maybe you all can tell your family members or you know people that do this sport, just safety first and be safe and be careful and go from there. Okay. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for having me tonight.